Hello and welcome again to an episode of A Colonist and a Brit Get Along. Uh, I am joined again by my esteemed colleague, Kizza GT, who has been co-hosting our weekly live stream on Fridays. Kizza, how are you today, my friend? I'm doing well, enjoying my temporary freedom from work. Well, that's nice. I've had uh, involuntary freedom from most work this year because of the uh, lockdown insanity. It's not too bad specifically in my area, but it's starting to trickle down to hurt business around here. So it hasn't been the best for uh, finding good uh, employment contracts around here lately, but I'm still getting by. Um, today, uh, we yeah. wanted to, to talk about a particular failing of the United Kingdom government. And uh, Kesa, how about you uh, tell us what we're going to be talking about first today? Um, how pathetically limp-wristed the Tory government is when it comes to immigration, more specifically, illegal immigration. Well, I can't wait to hear about that. Uh, are you going to tell us about the uh, the recent goings-on that uh, Nigel Farage has unearthed? Well, I found this out through uh, Mayor... Uh, how do you say his name? Mayor Tol Tulsi? Uh, how do you suppose say his name? You, you know who I'm talking about, Mayor, Mayor Tol... Yeah, but Tulsa, I don't know how to pronounce it either, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, I, um, him, yeah, he, I Sam saw his video where Farage came about and covering this, uh, frankly scandalous incident of where apparently up to 48,000 illegal migrants have been basically hooked, posted up in a hotel room at the taxpayer's expense. And, and the reason is they, I, I believe the reason given is they don't have enough housing government housing to put them in so the taxpayer money is just paying for 48,000 people roughly 50,000 illegal immigrants to stay in hotels because we don't have housing or detainment facilities uh, to handle that many in the UK so they're just putting them in hotels right uh well if they try and use that excuse um tell that to all the fucking people you already have on the streets right now I think it was estimated they had something like over 7,000 soldiers? No, I mean, that's that's the official reason given. We, I think you and I both agree yeah. that they that the government doesn't have any plans of sending these people back. They're going to keep them here. Well, yeah. I mean, how if they want to get themselves kicked out of the next election, continue doing it. I do hope that we see a strong nationalist push in politics in the next few years. I really hope that enough people are sick and tired of these awful politicians and start electing people at a local level who actually seem to care about the countries that they're part of and the people that live in them. Well, sadly, thanks to my kind of terrible first past the post, we would have had that with UKIP regarding the 25th election. They would have gained 19, in which case they would have forced, they would have forced a coalition the Tories or Labour, and basically they would have not have gone into them unless they gave, basically did what they were told in regards to the concept of Brexit and immigration. Sadly, that ship sailed, though, and UKIP sort of folded when they uh, they had the uh, switch of leadership that they did. Um, is there a particular thing about yeah. illegal immigration and this, uh, this hotel nonsense that's been unearthed that you want to talk about? Anything in particular? Well, I mean... Not to beat the old bush, but it's just ridiculous how Pretty Patel is all talking no bottle when it comes to dealing with the boats when it turns out the French Navy are basically a these illegal migrants to cross the channel into the UK, when technically that violates Dublin, from my understanding, the Dublin Agreement, but also the Schengen Zone. Right, because the way that, the way that that's supposed to work is if people are found uh, trying to illegally enter, they're supposed to be detained by... Uh, British national forces or organizations processed and then either punished by law or ex expelled or expelled back to where they're supposed to be, correct? Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Yes, but what we're basically seeing and what this just goes back all the way to the migration crisis in 2015 is a lot of them are basically getting to France, not claiming asylum there, and then deliberately trying to emigrate into England, which under the Dublin Agreement, you're meant to claim asylum Sorry for the train. It's all right. What yeah. happened? Did, did a big did a big vehicle drive by your house or something? No, no, no. A big train's just going by. Oh, no worries. Um, the, yeah. But what you're yeah, talking so. about is similar to the problem that we have in America. Um, and thankfully, it's seeming to be getting a little better. Where for several years, migrants were coming from South America up through Mexico and were being funded 
by those who we cannot name, uh, big names NGOs. that uh, that big names NGOs. that you and I definitely know, uh, to skip uh, countries in between on their way to uh, America, which I think that's exactly what's happening with the migrants that come through France on their way to Britain. Correct. Well, yeah, yeah, because but like I said, this this has been an ongoing problem since basically 2015. What makes me laugh about the Dublin Agreement? People honestly believe you are refugees. No, they are not. Even a German publication back in 2016 founded that as much as 80% of them were not refugees. Oh, of course not. They are economic migrants. They're or uh, or even worse, active agents under the employ of those that we can't name or agencies thereof. Well, hell, I mean, LBC, Farage's former employees, did a little piece on this about some guy who was basically paying, getting paid 7000 to legally emigrate somebody into the United Kingdom per person. Yeah, over here we call them coyotes. They're professional people smugglers that get people from the Mexico side to the America side on our southern border. Exactly. And then... This makes me laugh. Like, if you want to, if you want to address this problem, well, you're going to have to go absolute ham on this problem, very aggressive. That's the best way. Though. Then they'll realize, oh lord, these people are going to, going to, quote unquote, do very bad things to me if I dare break the rules. I don't want to be there. I don't want to risk that. Yeah, I've been saying that for a long time about illegal immigration. Legal immigration is another entire subject that we have to fight hard on. But when it comes to illegal immigration, to use your phrase, going ham, I think that's what the, we, we have to do that because people that are willing to, to, to risk the, the rigors of traveling across nations where they probably don't speak the language, they have to put up with the criminal element, they likely will be sexually assaulted or violently assaulted or exploited along the way just to get here. These are already yeah. desperate and or criminal-minded people who just want to get to a place for better economic uh, and, um, I guess you could say, uh, societal peace or whatever, because most of these people that are coming are not coming from the, the most stable of places. Now, I think that the best way to discourage this behavior is to start making examples out of people. And I don't mean like public executions or anything nuts like that. What I mean is start actually enforcing hardcore uh, the, the, the things we already have on the books, such as you come here illegally, bam, immediate prison. Bam, immediate loss of freedom. You don't get any money. You don't get any perks. You go to jail. And on top of that, we start processing and incriminating those who are facilitating this happening. Because there are many people that are citizens where we live that actively facilitate this crap. We need to process, we need to arrest them, make it public, and send them to prison for a long time. I think that would send an excellent message and eventually stop the, uh, stop the influx we have of illegals. Well, that's, that's one thing. I mean... This is perhaps why I think I may have suggested to you in the past, but in terms of America, if you were to put armed drones all across the border, that's quote-unquote SOS, to use an anagram, and they saw a bunch of uh, bones all across, all across the border, they'll think, whoa, what the hell, what the hell's going on here? And they'll instantly turn around. Yeah, I, I agree with that. The, the reason that I don't think that we will see that and I don't push for that is it's very difficult to get people in, in in a country like ours to want to use lethal force against people who are not using lethal force against us. And while, of course, you and I both agree that ethically they are coming here to harm us, I don't think that we are going to see either of our governments or the people that we live with being willing to put, you know, uh, lethal point defense and defense drones along our borders to just shoot or blow up the people that come across illegally. I don't think we're going to see that happen. However, that would be an excellent message, and I wouldn't mind having a country that lethally enforced its borders like most other nations do. Well, here's the thing. Well, here's the funny thing, though. With me, because I live on an island, we have literal water that's basically that's effectively a giant border. The thing is, you could see if someone's coming because we're living on water, and you could basically intercept that straight away from a distance. The problem is, is that if Pratu Patel wasn't so pathetically limp-wristed and weak, she could have very easily sent the troops down there and made an example. Yeah, but I, I think that like a lot of people who 
uh, say they are conservative or right-wing in our governments, I believe that they they know if they talk that way, they will shore up what they need to get elected and to get the press they need to push their agenda. And I seriously doubt that even someone who I originally had faith in to do the right thing, like Pretty Patel, I think that we're really seeing now just how, uh, to, use a, uh, to use the phrase, leftist, uh, so many of our politicians are, even when they say they're right-wing or conservative. Well, yeah, I mean, there was a great video somebody posted uh, called The Based in the based in red pill conservatives and it was so unbelievably progressive who made that video i haven't seen that pop up who did that one uh let me find it um because it was on the telegram of a band youtuber where is it i uh was it um was it iconoclast because he he got he got zucked recently it was on his telegram let me see if you uh, I'll bring it up. Ah, no chance. A guy called No Chance. Okay. Is he on BitChute? Because if so, we can put the link in the description. He might be. I mean, the video is called Pretty Patel and the Super Faced Conservative. Okay, we'll put that in the description for other people to watch. Yeah. So it's just basically yeah, a depressing and, uh, video showing just how not conservative and how not right wing our supposed conservative right wing leaders are. Well, yeah, but like I like I say to him, like uh, this is what kind of annoys me with the term conservative. So many people don't understand a conservative is by default a traditionalist. That is the primary thing, and this is why I kind of get annoyed when American when Americans say they're conservative, because technically speaking, an American conservative doesn't exist. <laughs> I don't know. We've been around for a, a quarter of a millennium now, and that's that's you can have traditions. Yeah, but when I'm set, when I'm talking ultra traditionalism, I'm talking something that goes back five hundred plus years. Well, and, and I, I would mean, say if you're an American conservative, you have to be a Native American na ethno national. <laughs> okay, well maybe we disagree on that yeah. a little bit, but when it comes to, to well, like yeah, yeah, that's just, that's just me though. Well, when it comes to the the issue at hand of the illegal immigration. Uh, I know that yeah. traditionally all countries have been very strict on who can come. Uh, I mean, go back as far as you want to go in history, even if you go back to very, very long time ago, where you've got uh, feudal states. Uh, people couldn't just willy-nilly go wherever they wanted without good reason, without paperwork, without being allowed by the king or the clergy or whatever to come on certain properties. So I think that that's a major failing of conservatives is they... They either have never felt conservative or traditional in the ways of protecting the, the land that they're part of, or once they get involved with government money and lobbying and corporate persuasion, they immediately sell out their people and their values of, or whatever traditional values they once held. And they realize that GDP and corporate money specifically thrives on massive amounts of immigration, even the illegal kind. So then they just sell their soul and there you have it. Do you think it's mostly one or the other? Yeah, well, well, definitely. But on the point of GDP, it's funny how these people love to preach about GDP, but seem to ignore a little tiny thing called GDP per capita, and that is a best, and that is the real indicator of wealth in the country than GDP itself. Yeah, and that's um, we... GDP per capita. That's that's more akin to uh, looking at uh, median uh, median income levels, medium debt ratio, that kind of thing. Exactly, because if you just look at things on raw GDP, well, by that same logic, then China, if you look at it, it's doing amazing. Whereas if you look at the GDP per capita, it's actually doing terribly. Whereas if you look at somewhere, let's say, like Switzerland, GDP, yeah, it's inferior to the United Kingdom, but if you look at the GDP per capita, it's among the highest in the world. Yeah, exactly. And I'd like to move us back towards where we exactly. don't care as much about overall quantity, but we care about individual quality of small businesses, people's personal investments, that kind of thing. And except for the little tiny bit that we got in the Trump administration from the from the uh, tax cuts, there really hasn't been any of that for, you know, uh, lower class to middle class uh, small investments, 
uh, small businesses of less than like you know 20 employees and stuff. We we haven't seen a lot of growth in that sector, uh, probably since before I well, was born. If I if I had to if I had to just well, take a stab at it. Well, from what I understand, before COVID properly everything off, um, initially I think Donald Trump had actually the highest growth of those of the lower classes than any than since the. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. And since World War Two. Yeah, I read that. And also he had record level and he also had record levels of low unemployment across multiple sectors. Yep. So economically speaking, under Trump, you basically had before COVID came along, the best you basically had a time better than those who came out of World War Two. Oh yeah, definitely. We we've been seeing I mean, even even in spite of the horrific tax debt hole that we've been dicking ourselves into in America. Uh, several businesses are bouncing back. Some private sectors are doing better than ever. Uh, not all uh, private businesses have collapsed under the ridiculous lockdowns. Some are doing okay. Uh, some are gone for good, of course. But uh, even uh, even in yeah. bigger cities, we're still seeing some smaller businesses survive, which I think is a testament to how good things were going before the lockdown insanity. Well, yeah. I mean, what what really annoys me most of all is the fact that the whole lockdown thing. If you look at the countries that did the so-called best in terms of the lockdown, ironically, a lot of them didn't have "quote unquote" lockdowns. What they did was basically shut travel from, from shut travel, yep. shut um, foreign tourists and international. Travel I think from that's China. what we should have done because I, the the lockdown thing is just oh, absolutely I'm... bonkers. And I think that the people who pushed for lockdown were specifically uh, guided by. An angry sentiment towards the estab- towards the the anti-establishment movement in America in the West, and I think that they they knew that scaring people, uh, throwing a monkey wrench into the economy, trying to fear monger. I I think that what we have seen from the so-called lockdown, uh, that that's in my opinion the real scandemic. Like I think that is is the yeah. is the biggest hypocrisy and the biggest scandal is that you have so many leaders, so many governors and mayors and politicians in both the UK and America that exploited this this pandemic uh, for political gain and to hurt or even destroy businesses for political gain. And that's why I want to see them all tried oh, yeah. for treason and, if if possible... Uh, public- oh, don't get me started. Well, don't, <laughs> I mean, don't get me started on the whole treason thing. Jesus Christ, if I became leader of this island, my lord, I, I would bring back... Uh, how can I put this? I bring back an old tradition, but but make but put a major twist on it, <laughs> so that you would see an immediate uh, 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 increase in the uh, demand of rope. <laughs> no, no, no. Why bother with rope when I could use something far more powerful and effective, and also make some money out of it and do pay per views and get betting companies on, seeing how many <laughs> how many. Uh, Subjects could be done dealt with in one fell swoop. <laughs> so, um, when it comes to the illegal immigration in the hotels thing that uh, Nigel Farage unearthed, yeah, uh, I've not read about it like you yeah. have. I just saw somebody mention it on social media. Uh, do you know some particulars and want to share some details about it with us? From uh, one of the from one of the clips I did see of it, I haven't watched the entire thing because I've been so busy with work and trying to catch up with. So much on YouTube, like Jesus Christ, I've got about like a week's worth of backlog to work on. And honestly, after after my last day, after my last day on Friday, I was working in 37 degrees heat, which I'm pretty certain is illegal. But what do I know? Yeah, I remember you telling me that on Discord. 37. That's that ridiculous. Is freaking... Yeah, and this is an old factory with no aircon. Oof, that's I mean, that's how... rough. I've had I'm to work with... in conditions like that before. That's killer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what makes it worse is if my old man who works on building sites, if it reaches 35, they send you early. But anyway, so, yeah. mo- moving on about uh, the Farage thing. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Basically, he was looking around certain hotels in a in a district, and he's trying to get rooms, but, like, he can't book anyway, so he just turns up. And not, I think he escorted around in a Range Rover or something like that. And basically, he's looking around the car park, no cars. And that's, hotels, that's when he noticed, hey, if there's no cars here, why is there no vacancy? Yeah, exactly, and stuff like that. And he also spoke with a few locals about this, and then he's saying that, oh, apparently your mayor said the town was wonderful, and according to these locals in the area, they had no clue about it. 
So even the people that live around these hotels didn't know that they were being flooded with illegals. Yep, always the bloody way, and just more case of treason by a politician. Like the whole thing with like, yeah, it's don't get me started on the it's whole really thing disgusting. Like I I know that there's probably always been crooked politicians, but it seems like in the modern era they, they don't even pretend to hide it anymore. That they, they just do whatever the hell they want for their corporate or globalist interests, and then they just don't care. They they barely even try to cover it up or hide it anymore. It's 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 kind of crazy. Well, of course not. Well, of course not. I mean, hell, I made my local MP fucking cry like a cry like a baby back. Uh, female dog. You did? <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, tell me about that. That's interesting. Oh, basically, she was siding with the council when we were having issues about potentially being made homeless, and we showed them the proof that, no, they're lying through their teeth, blah, 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 and then she tried saying, oh, we're lying, and we showed them the proof, and then we literally publicly humiliated humiliated her in front, in front of a skull. That's fantastic. But she still got... That's what but I'm talking about like whenever that. I say that people need to become locally involved with local governance, their city ordinances, their city council meetings, because that's where we can have the most change. Because local politicians, like everything goes uphill, and most people don't just say, well, you know what, I'm going to go be a senator. Most people that get involved in bigger government work their way up from smaller government or smaller municipalities. And if we stay vigilant and active in all of our local communities, making sure we can get the best people in positions of local power while doing just what you did, naming, shaming, and bringing attention to the people that are corrupt, that's where we can have the most change, in my opinion, in the near future, is uh, small-time yeah. local municipality stuff. Well, yeah, but like I said, my, my, where I live, it's been a labor safe since, it, since they got the place, since they got an MP back in the early 80s. Thankfully, around here, everything is fairly conservative and right-wing and pretty Christian, so it's fairly easy to know what's going on here. I just have to listen to the people that talk at my mother's church, listen to people at the... Uh... Well, yeah, but, but like I said, I mean, my local city is a lost cause. My local city is literally a lost cause. They will keep on voting like Really? No matter what. Yeah, 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 God, that's, that's disgusting. We, yeah, I mean, we really need I mean, to, to pull the I mean, over to window back. It's It's so far gone, I can barely see it anymore. Well, don't forget, don't forget, I did tell you that my local city did have a grooming gang, so... Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so... Uh, so anyway, more yeah, on, more like, about like Farage. Said, tell me more yeah. about this stuff that you that you learned about. Yeah, so yeah, with that, and obviously there's been, um, you perhaps heard, all the ongoing cases of boats entering the country illegally, and it's, I think it's reached as high as like 2,000 people who illegally entered uh, since uh, the start of the year. By boat and it's utterly and it's utterly ridiculous. And the worst bit is Farage himself, quote unquote, broke lockdown rules, which were con constitutional, to report on this. And then instead of the police and the Home Office actually getting on top of that, they instead decided to visit Farage's house. Do you think because that's 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 how pathetic our police force it. Do, do you think that now that somebody has uh, become uh, has sh has shined light on this, do you think that you're going to see at least some local reporting on it, or do you think that there's going to be no reporting on this? No, the journalistic class, for the most part, literally are all in one tight knit group, and no one dare speaks out. Why do you think I mean, that I'll is? Look at that, um, is it because the British people uh, are crippled by white guilt and, and they they fear? Or do you think it's something else? No, it's because the journalistic class are a bunch of fucking anti, uh, basically a bunch of anti-English hate, uh, anti-English freaking asshats. That's all our poster who despise their country and want, want the worst to happen to it. That's such a shame. We, we, to, we have got to find a way to get these people out of out of their uh, positions of power because they're going to see us all dead or broke or disheveled. It's very sad. Well, well, yeah, but like I said, I only know how to fix that problem. The problem is I need a certain somebody just to do what needs to be done. Yeah, that's, that's a problem. Is uh, We seem to have a lack of leaders who are willing to do what is necessary, and uh, that's very sad. But... Hopefully in the near future we are going to see some change. At least I hope so, because 
Like I've made videos on before, if words fail us, next comes the blades and the bullets, and I would like to avoid that part if all possible. Yes, but like I said, it wouldn't be the first time in the United States I've had to resort to bullets to solve the issue. Yeah. Sad but true. But honestly, it makes me laugh how, and it makes me laugh how so many of these so-called revolutions are basically nothing more than two idiots. I'm just like, you guys are morons. They are on your side, you test. <laughs> if you truly believe the sort of shit that you are spousing on fucking camera, you would have packed up and left like the Jews did in, in Nazi Germany. Yeah, exactly. I, I make that point all the time, especially back when I used to live out west in a, in a big lefty city. People would talk about how we live in a, such an ugly, oppressive country and blacks and Mexicans and all this yeah. other stuff. They get unfairly treated. And my response to that always was, if this is such a terrible place, how come these groups that you say are oppressed by our terrible system are the ones lining up and risking life and limb to get here, whether legally or, or illegally? And the ones that get here that are immigrants that you talk to talk about how what a wonderful, amazing place this is, and they're glad to be here. Like, it's just, it's such a, a, a delusional dissonance that these people have, it's incredible. Well, that's just because, that's because they're infected with double things. And this is the point that I did try and, and put, did ask the question to, to a certain uh, Winters, but sadly my comment was deleted. As and she is wont to do. It. Yeah, yeah. I asked her, well, if it's such a bad and impressive system, dear, why do you insist on in inviting all these anyway into the Western world? Or are you just a yep. filthy racist? It's a, it, it, is, it is a conundrum that uh, I have never gotten an NPC or a leftist to properly answer. It's because, A, if the system is extremely oppressive, how can you, as a intersectional or female or black or whatever person even have the position of power to be talking down to me about this from a position of power, and B, if it is so terrible, why are you pushing to get more and more of your people that you say will be oppressed here to come here? It just, it doesn't compute in any way, and I've never had a leftist that, that uh, or an NPC come back to me w with any kind of argument or, or reason for that. It's just, it's complete moronic, uh, like like you said, double thing. Screeching. Screeching. Yeah, no, simple because these people are not taught to think; they're just taught to obey. Literally, I mean, I really hate to throw this side under the bus, but if they were born, if they if they were in the Middle East, they would be ISIS members. If they were in nineteen thirties Germany, they would be they would be brown shirts. And if they yeah. were in the thousand years ago, they would be the religious zealots. Yep, and unfortunately, because of the boom of success in the last hundred years in the West. Not only do we have the active seditious element that wants to pervert people's minds, but because of the welfare state, because of how good we have it, because of our overabundance of food, because of bulldozer parenting, and all these other things, we have been actively selectively breeding for the laziest and the dumbest to grow in number. And now we're starting to reap the rewards of that poisoned fruit, sadly. Well, yes, but the point, and this is my point when people about natural selection. Natural selection happens when you have a very dangerous society, such as the wild, it's kill or be killed. That's it. Mm -hmm. When you have a fucking nice, subtle, stable, healthy society, the fucking worst elements of humanity in terms of their laziness and all the stuff grows. You want to know why you see so many fat asses or medically ill people in this world? Well, guess what? Because society allows them to live. Exactly. And, and previously, we you weren't allowed to live it. that way. <laughs> you, would, you would literally either not have the option to be, or you would die out or have to live out in the wilderness, and then you would die or, or either change your ways. Exactly. So, like, for instance, if when people hear about, I, I mean, I hate this term, eugenics, but if we truly enforce eugenics in terms of the United States, do you know how many fucking how many people would be, would be utterly screwed over with that system? More than half. Exactly. Yep. I mean, and, how, how many people are in the United States are diabetic? God, it's got to be millions. It, I would say. Exactly. I would say at least five million. It's got to be a ton. Exactly, and also what, like around over a third of the population are clinically overweight. Or at least one I think two. I, I think I think one third it's, it's between one half and one third of Americans are clinically overweight some but 
I think it's it's a staggering percentage that are considered dangerously obese in America. I think it's like 18%, something like that. It's crazy. It's like one out of four yeah, exactly. or one out of five people is considered to be of the dangerous, overweight, or more category. It's it's just disgusting. Well, exactly. And then people and in the UK, it's not much better. And then people wondering, why do we have this? And they're trying to do this things about banning junk food and people wonder why i'm against nationalized health care like we already have we we have like what 20 30 million americans that are already eating themselves into an early grave on top of that we've got what 40 or 50 million people that are avid drinkers and smokers my tax money to pay for federal health care for them no fucking way well, yeah, but like I said, I've already looked into the whole Obama, the Affordable Health Care Act, and it, and it was definitely not affordable. Yeah, <laughs> the Affordable Health Care Act. That's the, the, the biggest misnomer in history. <laughs> well, yeah, because I knew a friend who actually was in America at the time who actually read through the regulation. The, the overwhelming majority of it had nothing to do with health care. Yeah, it had to do with insurance and tax sense. money and, and uh, uh, what Pricing. was the... What was, what was the, uh, the the primary thing in the ACA that uh, there was some clause or some title? Oh, in it. that's it. That's it. If 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 someone didn't have insurance and they made a claim, they had to give them the cover. They had to give them the cover regardless of what it was. So what happened was a lot yeah, of that that, that had a number and a tag on it, but I forget. I, I can't conjure it right now because I'm bad at remembering those. No idea. Yeah, but basically, because a lot of people actually lost their perfectly healthy people who you know had their own health insurance that were effectively lost their insurance because of all the fucking fat asses. Yep. Deliberately exploiting it. I'm just like, that's why we can't have nice things, people. And even yeah, exactly. And the NHS, Jesus Christ. Do you know how many times I want to fucking smash a fucking <laughs> wrench around the NHS? I know. People say, oh, it's like Kurt's cow. You can't describe it. Like, people are talking about cuts, cuts, cuts. No, it's not getting cuts. It's got the biggest budget in its entire fucking history. And the, it's got triple the budget than it had 20 years ago, yet we're getting inferior service. Yep, and that's because it, the system is taxed, and people are a finite resource. Educated, devoted, caring professionals are a finite resource. And if you're going to just keep pumping millions and millions of needy people into the system, you don't just magically generate 400% more doctors, nurses, and facilities. Well, exactly. But what makes me laugh is the fact that basically they end up expanding the amount of middle management within it. I'm just like, why the fuck are you expanding middle management in a hospital? Middle management doesn't wipe runny noses and give shots. Exactly. And this is what kind of makes me laugh when say, how would you fix healthcare? It's like, very simple. Rip out all the middle management and make it a very bottom-heavy system. Yep. I think that we need a, a new focus of uh, in our countries of just what tax money is supposed to do and what governments are supposed to do. I think that we need to have well, a, a, a right-wing resurgence of ideology. We need people to realize that a government is not a family, a government is not your pastor, a government is not a church, and a government is not your friend. A government exists to protect the country and to let the people inside that country have the freedom to build the systems and services that they want to share with each other. And I think that we have lost sight of that generations ago, and it hasn't been taught to our people. And I think that we well, need yeah. to start teaching that to our people. Yeah, I mean, me personally, I would say tax money, taxes are there for maintenance of the, of the nation or civilization. Mm -hmm. That's it. And as for the government, it's meant to deal with international affairs. And, and primarily and to, sure. to defend against extranational threats. That's primarily what the, the government and the military is for. For sure, for sure. But also to make sure contracts within within the state itself. Are, well. Yeah, exactly. Like I in my like that's why I'm more of a minarchist than a than a complete ANCAP is because I think that there is value in having a a sort of community chest, a community pot that everybody chips into a little bit. Because you want yeah. their you want your your place in the world to be properly defended, and people who are not completely driven by greed and market to be invested in learning what's going on outside your country to keep your country safe from the threats that they know about. And you want that same system to make sure that nobody inside becomes a rival or a threat 
and that usually means regulating interstate trade and regulating trade between large um, large private firms. And I think that's really all that we actually need a proper government for. I don't think we need it for much more than that. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it might have been uh, Milton Friedman who said it, that the government's meant to be a referee and nothing else. Yeah, it's a good way to say it. Yeah, I mean, my case, I mean, if I was ruling this island, I mean, I would, dare, I would dare say it would be a dictatorship, but it wouldn't necessarily be a dictatorship in the sense that we see in, let's say, the Middle East or Turkey. <laughs> you, are you than... saying you would be a kind and benevolent overlord? <laughs> no, I'm not saying I'm not going to be kind or benevolent, but I'm, going to make, I'm not going to lie to people. I'm going to be very honest and upfront saying, listen, I am a massive see you next Thursday, and you are all going to enjoy it. <laughs> well, wouldn't that be nice? Unfortunately, that's never no, no, going to happen. <laughs> well, touche, but you never know. Strange things happened, and also, like I said, I've already, like I said, if I were to roll this island, I would need about fifteen years to fix. It. Yeah, it would. I don't mean fix it in the leftist sense of fixing it. I mean actually fix it to the point where I could just disappear tomorrow, uh -huh. and it'll still be running, you know. But... Well, I, I like to think that we can get to something like that eventually, because we have we do have a lot of enemies, but at the same time, the information age also works for us. We are seeing more and more people create new social media groups, create new social media platforms, millions of people strong that are sick and tired of how things are being ran, about how we are being forced to pay for A, B, C, D, and E. And I think that we are seeing some real change and growth in a community level that I believe is going to have a lot of effect in the upcoming years. So I'm not as black-pilled as a lot of us are. I'm, I'm actually kind of white-pilled about things. Well, I mean, I'd love to be optimistic, but to be honest, I well, in terms of the UK, I think the only way this is going to change, I, I hate to use other people's ideas, but the best way to save this country is for both the Tories and the Labour Party to destroy well, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that I am white-pilled about the system we currently have magically getting better. I don't think that's going to happen. What I mean is, there are enough people that are aware of what's going on, aware of the problems. We have millions more people every year wanting to homeschool, wanting to invest in cryptocurrency, wanting to uh, invest and disseminate their ideas through alternate channels. I think that we are going to see a new upsurgence of the connectivity of people and communities away from these toxic governments and, and uh, multinational media conglomerates. I think that we're seeing a healthy move away from that stuff, and I really hope that means that we're going to raise a generation of people that are not infected with the mind cancer, and that's what I'm most hopeful well, about. Well, I hope so, but the problem is these days, the kids these days are too busy hooked on TikTok, or as I like to call it, buying zero because that's what it literally is <laughs> yeah that's true and, but i mean uh, i still think that there's going to be millions and millions of children that grow up with parents like me and you who realize that they have to instill safe and good ideas into their kids and keep them away from these these horrible lies and and corrupt systems i, I think that we're because i'm seeing that in my daily life and i'm in my 40s now and i think that there are people even younger than me that are having young children who are already on board because I talk to dozens of them every week in the uh, the going free stream uh, over on Jason's channel and yeah. I think that there's more than that because sometimes I'll bump into people like at the hospital where I'm taking somebody I won't name uh, or when I'm at the uh, yeah, at, yeah. at the city center uh, putting in applications trying to get new work contracts I bump into people and they'll have their kids with them and the kids aren't in school, and, and I'll, when I make small talk, they'll be like, yeah, we don't send them to public school anymore, we homeschool. And, and I'm starting to hear and see more of that, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what the exact rules are with homeschooling, okay? But I know homeschooling is quite common in the United States. Yeah, also, it might be more common in the United States because there's just so much damn land to cover. Like, a lot of times there will only be, like, one one elementary school in, like, a 50 or 100-mile area. And it's just yeah. easier for families to, to have the wife or the, or the husband, whoever stays home, uh, to, to educate the kids. Yeah, yeah, because I also read something, apparently, according to Harvard's own data, homeschool children are actually better than, than uh, quote-unquote, uh, uh, what's the word? Um comprehensive school, yeah. comprehensive education mm -hmm. uh, children. 
Well, I think it's because people... Which I always found was quite funny. Unless, unless you just have a crappy parent that doesn't care, and it's just, you know, going through the motions. I think that a parent is genuinely invested in a child if they are willing to homeschool them. And when a teacher is genuinely invested in a student and gets to spend time and care with the student, I believe that regardless of the material being taught, there's a better a better series of mental pathways that develops for understanding and applying knowledge that happens instead of just having to go through school. Well, yeah, I mean, somebody jokingly said to me, uh, you should be a teacher to be really good at it. And I'm just like, hell no. <laughs> if, yeah. I, if I was a teacher, I spent more time beating the living damn out of the children than actually teaching. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to be a teacher in a public school. If I was going to teach, I would do it in a direct mentorship way, like where I would take a small number of people, or one person even, and actually educate them for many, many years and teach them everything that I know and everything I've learned and teach them the things that I think are valuable from what I've been able to extrapolate from history and philosophy. And I think that if we would all teach our children like that, we would have such an amazing generation of brilliant thinkers and engineers and philosophers and politicians and people that would really lead us to a better way of being. Well, I mean, as I can speak as someone as an engineer, one thing we can say is we generally tell rule books and establishments to go after themselves. We and, want to build something, we bloody well do and that. That's a, and another thing about the establishment when it comes to education, from what I can tell about the American education system, the things that are taught are very watered down and piss poor and cater to a lowest common denominator specifically to meet government requirements. And teachers in the education system seem more like professional babysitters that just have to teach people the bare minimum of what it would takes to pass a, an annual test to keep the state money coming in. And I don't think that that means children are getting actual educations. They're getting some semblance of an education, but more than anything, they're just being indoctrinated into a statist system that teaches them how to cut corners and how to say the right words and give the right handshakes just to get a paycheck. And to me, exactly. I think that's just creating like the Ancapistan ideal of mindless wage slave work drones. And I don't want that to be the bulk of our children. I want our children to be brilliant thinkers and engineers and creators and warriors and athletes and people that actually understand natural philosophy and understand spiritualism and things like that. And I don't think anything about our modern education system is conducive to creating that kind of person. It's actually directly counter to that. Well, yeah, but the big problem is what people don't seem to understand is in order to create such a society, you don't have a pleasant society. You have to have basically a minefield. Yeah, exactly. You need challenges and dangers, and, and, and I, I don't like how that has, at an ideological level, we think it's a good idea to remove those things because we aren't artificially putting those things back in. Because if you're going to artificially exactly. remove dangers and challenges, like the uh, in, in, in ecology you call it culling, like the culling of the herd, the culling of a species, yeah. we don't have yeah. a culling process anymore. With, you know, going back even to the 70s with your consolation prizes and your trophies of participation, all this other horseshit that has basically removed every hurdle, every barrier, everything that can make a child sad or have an owie, we remove it, and we're not artificially putting anything in for that culling process to actually build character and to build strength. And, and now look where we are. We've got people in business and government that are limp-wristed, weak weak terrible people that don't that have never built character or physical strength because of adversity and they're terrible weak well, empty people it's awful well exactly and this is why i despite my young rather young age compared to yourself uh, uh i can freaking bend over i can uh <clears throat> not literally speaking bend over the HR manager of a table, point out the fact employment legislation, and make it very clear to him that if he doesn't honor his side of the deal, you will take it, you'll drag it out of the court. I think, I think that we need to see more of that. And I, I know that in America we have seen parents challenging local educators a lot, and that's good. I, I like seeing stories like that crop up. Uh, I, yeah, and I did that. Yeah, one of I my guilty pleasures is I follow a rather biased and uh, sometimes fake newsy website called uh, the Washington Examiner. And, uh, oh, I know of them. 
<laughs> yeah, don't don't believe the things uh, that you come across on there at face value, but they they yeah, do. Them, yeah. They are really good about sharing stories about uh, angry parents and uh, PTAs and people going up against uh, corrupt school member or corrupt school leaders going up against the school board and that kind of thing. So it's nice yeah, to sure. see those kind of stories. It's very very white pilling to see that. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. But like, uh, like for myself, with one of my exams, what we had to do, we had to build a vehicle n- n- known as a GP Midget, which is like a tiny dirt oval racer for for a local event, and we built it. And we built it with a certain engine, which which I found we could use based on the rules. And then when we smashed the when we smashed the uh, the uh, the race. All the old boys are complaining, saying, "Oh, we're cheating. We're using illegal engines." And the officials came down. So, excuse me, officials, this is your rule book, right? Yes. Can you please tell me exactly where it says I can't use this type of engine. Looked at it. Now say, "Yep, it's legal." <laughs> All the old boys were pissed. And then, forty-eight hours later, they changed the rules. <laughs> well, hey, at least you got that cool victory, and you forced the change. That's cool. Well, yeah, 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 but this is what pisses me off about my, well, the industry I studied in, is that it is, despite being the pinnacle of engineering excellence, uh, it is an absolute massive bitch fest when it comes to fucking rules. Like, the rules, because the rules, because as we were taught, you take what it states. Not what it means, what it states. You take the literacy of the rule, not the spirit of the law. Okay. And that's how um, that's how your engineering training went. Well, yeah, because if you have a rule that says you could you have a part which has to be this big, but it doesn't specify how many parts of that you can have, you go ham with it. So, for example, the engine in question it said we weren't allowed to be anything above one point four liters or fourteen hundred cc, but it didn't specify we could use, we had to use a car engine. So instead, we used a motorcycle engine. <laughs> Cool. Well, uh, we're yeah. getting to we're getting towards the end of the uh, of the episode today. Uh, I'm okay. keeping it short because I have to uh, hop back into meat space and get some tasks done. But uh, I, I really did that. enjoy our conversation today, and I, I'd like to do more okay. of these, not just with you, but with other people in the community. So those of you for who sure, sure. who listen and enjoy these kind of conversations I have with Kizza, Carnal Conservative, and others on my channel, if you're interested in having a long-form conversation with me uh, about a particular topic or something that you think uh, that me and all, all my viewers would really enjoy, uh, let me know in the comments or send me a message on one of my many social medias and let me know. So before we get out of here, Kisses, is there anything that you'd like to uh, to say? Uh, not much, not much. Just uh, what I would say to anyone who's listening here, make sure you understand that you know all the rules of the game and then play it better than everyone else does. Well said, my friend. Uh, Kiz and I will be back this Friday uh, for the weekly Unic Corner Club Live. Uh, he will be my co-host again. And uh, we look forward to yeah. seeing you all then. So, yeah. Take care, my friend Kissa. I will see you Friday. Take care, all of my lovely listeners and loyal Yisraelites. We will see you Friday. All right. Take care, Earl. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. <laughs>